My guest this week here at the Munich Security Conference is Adel al Jubeir, the Saudi Minister of State for Foreign Affairs. Why are there still so many unanswered questions about the murder and why the massive crackdown on human rights activists inside Saudi Arabia? Adel al Jubeir, welcome to Complex Zone. Nice to be here. It's around 16 months since uh, agents of your state murdered Jamal Khashoggi in cold blood in your consulate in Istanbul. What's striking in retrospect is that three days later your Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman told the Turkish authorities to search the consulate and added, we have nothing to hide. Remarkable statement because in fact the last 16 months have been full of aspects of this case that you have hidden right from the start and gone on hiding. Isn't that the truth? I don't believe so. We have said that uh, this was a rogue operation, that it was not authorized. We have investigated the people who were part of this operation. Charges were leveled against 11 of them. Five of them were facing the death penalty. The trial began in January. The trial was attended by representatives of the permanent five countries in, on the Security Council, plus Turkey. Plus well, I'd, like to talk, I'd like to talk about the trial, but, but, but straight away after the event, let's just take that expansive offer from the Crown Prince to search your consulate. It was another 10 days before Turkish investigators were actually allowed into the building. Why so long if you had nothing to hide? I'm not a technical person, but I understand that there are situations where countries have to agree on the mechanics and the modalities of how you want people to enter sovereign territory. You have to agree on the equipment, you have to agree on the scope, and you have to agree no country will allow another country full access to a diplomatic facility. That just doesn't happen. The UN Special Rapporteur Agnes Kalamar didn't see it that way. She found credible evidence pointing to the crime scenes having been thoroughly, even forensically clean. These indicate, she said, that the Saudi investigation was not carried out in good faith and that it may amount to obstruction With all justice. With respect, Agnes Kalamar did not have a mandate for this. She relied on sources from the newspapers and on leaks to the media. She, did not, uh, she didn't have any experts in forensics and other issues. But it's a safe assumption, isn't it? You clean up a crime scene immediately, you're hiding something. It's not a safe assumption. The issue with uh, Agnes Calamaris, she wrote a report based on news reports, and then she uh, uh, accused Saudi Arabia before even started. Look at her record when it comes to Saudi Arabia for a number of years, and how disparaging and how negative she has been against Saudi Arabia. The UN acknowledges that it's been an important step, this trial, towards accountability, but says it's failed to meet procedural and substantive standards. Trial has been held behind closed doors. Who in the U.S. said this? The, the report from the, um, from the uh, special rapporteur. The special Agnes rapporteur Kalmar. is biased. The special rapporteur Why? Because exceeded, you don't agree her, with her. exceeded her authority. The, sp the special rapporteur says the trial was secret. How can a trial be secret when we have representatives from the five permanent members of the Security Council plus Turkey? They went How? with an autopsy expert who had a bone I, saw I, with I him. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. But everybody that. else seems to know about I don't care what anybody it. says. I don't know about that. The idea with it is that this was authorized is ridiculous. This was a rogue operation that happened that should not have happened. We're going to be pay, paying a great price for it. It's a terrible tragedy. And the issue is we deal with it from a legal perspective. Jamal Khashoggi's family has come out and said, we have confidence in the Saudi judicial system. Why do you have to assume the worst when it comes to Saudi Arabia? Operations go wrong. This, this is a pretty happens. bad thing to happen. Nobody's assuming the uh, worst Abu here. Grabe, the worst happened. Abu Ghraib was pretty bad. And, and they got a lot of bad publicity for it, but we, we, we're not talking about the We got a lot United of bad States. publicity for it, and we're dealing with it, and we're putting people on trial, and we will be punishing them. Mr. al -Jubair, in March 2017, U.S. officials with access to classified intelligence reports told the New York Times that your crown prince had authorized a secret campaign to silence dissenters. That included surveillance, kidnapping, detention and torture, so-called rapid intervention team. I'm not going to comment on news reports attributed to anonymous sources. Some came from Saudi officials as well. Anonymous sources. Seems there was a standing order to Saudi intelligence to bring dissidents home. Anonymous sources. I cannot comment on anonymous sources. Everybody has misunderstood. Everybody who reports this massive crackdown, which the... Um, what massive crackdown? On, on, on uh, dissidents who? and people. We have the human ev rights groups, the international human rights groups, they're all wrong. I will give they? you an example. They're I will all give, wrong. I will give you an example and you tell me about this hypocrisy. In the 1990s, we had radical preachers who were calling for Jihad and death. Please, please, and can, I, you, you just want to you, take us in no, a different direction. You, you are moved us in this direction. So allow me to finish. I want to point out the hypocrisy. In the 1990s, 
we were criticized for having radical preachers in Saudi Arabia preaching hate. When we detained them, we were criticized for taking away their freedom of speech. It's a damn if you do, damn if you do situation, if you don't situation. Do you want them to preach hate or do you want them to stop? You can't have it both ways. That's the hypocrisy that we're facing. 36 countries, Germany, France, UK, Spain, Italy, Australia, have they also misjudged the situation in your country? Yes. You seem to be badly misunderstood by some of the most expert, biggest experts in the world. Yes. Yeah, really? Yes. How did that happen? I, How I could should, they know so little? They, they, should, they need to be more educated. We have been fighting terrorism. That's scarcely credible, is it? <laughs> I mean, you can sit here and say that, but that's insulting to their intelligence, we isn't it? We have laws, and there's a line between freedom of expression and incitement and murder. And we have laws in our country, and we have a court system, and people have to obey the laws, and the courts in Saudi Arabia are the ones who adjudicate these cases, and nobody else with due respect to all the NGOs and all the human rights organizations. And virtually every human rights activist is sitting in jail. That's not true. We were charged with detaining women for asking for the right to drive. That's not true. They were involved with foreign governments trying to recruit people in sensitive positions in order to obtain sensitive documents to be used by our enemies. That's called espionage. And the prosecution, when the trials are over, will present the evidence. Last month, Mr. Jubei, you addressed the European Parliament in Brussels. You tell the Parliament, stop criticizing our causes. We are a sovereign nation that refuses to be patronized. Yes. You're a member of the United Nations. You're there for we, scrutiny. We do not criticize other countries' legal systems, and we will not allow other countries to criticize our legal system. We have not criticized how people in Europe treat minorities or immigrants. We have not criticized Europe for its horrific past when it came to massive crimes against humanity. We don't do this. And we will not accept criticism of our legal system by others. If Saudi Arabia were so bad, nobody would come. Why would companies invest billions oh, of dollars in Oh, they'll always come and do business. business. They'll we, always come and do would, business. Why you would, know that. Why would entrepreneurs come and set up shop and sell Because they can make money, that's it. I, it's nothing, I, it's I, nothing to do with I your disagree, human rights. I disagree record, with is you. It? I, I, think, I, think, I think your mind is made up and you don't want to see the facts. Come to Saudi Arabia and see for yourself. Saudi you, told, you told the parliament, stop lecturing and start working with us. We have a court system. The court system is independent. We don't allow anyone to question. Just what you, just what you said to me. How do you suggest Europe works with you when you slam the door in its face like that? In what sense slam the door? Stop I, I, lecturing and start working yes, with us. Yes, we will not accept lectures. It's not a lecture. It's that's, a lecture. They're telling you the it's, results. It's a lecture based they're telling on, you the results of a, their research. It's a lecture based on lack of information of the Saudi legal system and how it works. It's a lecture based on information that they obtained either through hearsay or through inaccurate sources. You spoke at the parliament. You told them your view. They're not buying it. The, that's their They're prerogative. Not I'm not buying their view either. The major countries. I'm oh. not buying their view either. So where do they start? There's no starting point, if is you there? Look at, if you look at education, if you look at health care, if you look at life expectancy. We're not. We're looking if at you look, human that's rights. All human I rights. Know you, I that know is you. all human rights. If you look at media. Well, if well, you look what is health care to them if they're in jail? for years without charges. We have, we have more than 20 million Saudis. Are they all in jail? Nobody said they were all in jail. You're telling me they're all in jail. I, did, I said human rights activists are in jail. You see them act, as activists, we don't. As, as Amnesty don't. said, hardly any of them... We don't see them as activists. Hardly any of them are not behind bars. But with all due respect moment. to Amnesty International, we have a court system. We have a public prosecution that brought charges against them. The courts will adjudicate these cases. And if they're innocent, they will be released. And if they're guilty, they'll be punished. It's as simple as that. And with all due respect to Amnesty International, their opinion doesn't they matter. Say that, so what are you saying? You don't care about what people think about your human rights? I say we don't have the problem with human rights. We have a legal system. We have laws that people have to obey. If they don't obey those laws, they will be uh, charges filed against them, and they will have to face the courts. It's very simple. I believe you have not been fair in your views of Saudi Arabia and in the positions you're you are my views. These are the views that are quoted in, in, in the, extensively. In the questions that you've articulated, and I wanted to be able to show you that this is, there's a universal issue here. When you have a law, the law has to be obeyed. 
If you don't like the law, change it. Adel but Jibar. as long as it's on the books, we have to obey it. Adel Jibar. thank you very much for being on conference. You're welcome. Thank you.